Hello folks, today we're going to take a look at how to make this combo counter in Unreal Engine. Now this counter is going to count every single swing that the player is doing and also increase the counter. And if the player misses any of their swings or takes too long between their swings, it's going to go ahead and reset their combo. I'm really excited to show you how to do this in Unreal Engine. Now you can apply this function to many other different attack types, but today we're going to take a look at it, how to do the combo using a sword type. Again, I read every single comment and I try to make tutorial series for all of your requests. So feel free to ask me for any Unreal Engine tutorial in the comment section below. And I'll be more than happy to take a look at it and see if I can actually get it done for you. Now let's get into the video. Let's start our combo function. Now I have downloaded this animation from Mixamo and we'll be using this animation. So first we need to notify the game when the player starts swinging and stops swinging. To do that, we're going to be using anim notify states. In your content drawer, where you keep all of your animation, let's create a new folder and we're going to name this as notifies. Inside of here, right click, go to blueprint class and search for anim notify state. We're looking for state. And here we're going to name this ANS underscore sword swing. Let's go ahead and save this. Now let's go ahead and implement this anim notify state in our animation. So where it says track one or notifies one, we're going to go ahead and right click and then add notify state and you should have ANS sword swing. And you can actually stretch this out. These are two keyframes and you can stretch this out. So now we're going to go ahead and see where the player is about to start their attack. So it's just about here and put our first keyframe there and move it further down and see where the player is done swinging. So it's about there and we're going to end it. Save it. What this anim notify is going to do is at this first initial keyframe, it's going to run a begin function. And at this keyframe, it's going to run a end function. That's all that anim notify is going to do. And if we go into our anim notify swing, you'll see that it doesn't really have any graph or anything, but it does have functions. We're going to click on this override on the function and we're going to click on receive notify begin. That will be our first function that will be firing when the keyframe starts. And if you go to override again, there's a receive notify end. And this is the function that will fire when the keyframe ends. Now we need to send in an interface function when this happens. So we're going to go and create interface function. So in our BPI dungeon manager, I'm going to go ahead and create a new function and name this ANS underscore enable player weapon underscore collision. And then the second function would be ANS underscore disable player weapon underscore collision. So we have two of our interface functions here. Now in our ANS sword swing, we're going to go to receive notify begin, drag this out a little bit. And off of the mesh component, we want to drag and say get owner. So this will get our third person character. And using this, we're going to go ahead and say enable ANS enable player weapon collision. This is the new interface function that we just created. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in here as such. And that's it for the notify begin. So as soon as the animation gets to this point right here, this enable player weapon collision is going to fire. And at the notify end, same thing, we're going to get our owner of this mesh component who's running the animation, which is our player. And off of our player, we're going to go ahead and say ANS disable weapon collision. The reason why we are doing this is our collision on the weapon will be active at all times. So if I go to my weapon base, this collision box is active at all times. And we don't want that because if it is active at all times, when the player is just walking around with the sword, they're going to start touching things and hitting and start recording things, which we don't want. So we only want to enable this collision box when the player is about to start their swing. And when the player is done their swing, we're going to go ahead and disable the collision box. That's all we're going to do with this anim notify state. And to complete that, we're going to go to our content drawer. Go to, go to our third person character or first person character. We need to get a reference to our weapon. At this time, if you have been following up with this tutorial series, you remember we created a sword and then we attached it to the, uh, attached it to the player. We want to now change this, uh, just one bit of this. Instead of referencing directly to the sword, which is our child character, we want to now reference that to our base character. So all you have to do is uh, where the reference to attach weapon we're going to go ahead and change this to bp underscore weapon base. And this will ask you this could break connection. That's perfectly fine. Just click on change variable type. Nothing much should happen because we only have this one reference. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to get that weapon reference. And off of this, we're going to get our impact box. This is what we have set up our collision box named as. Drag off of this and search for set collision enable. And I'm going to copy this and paste it one more time. And the first one is going to be Cori only physics. And the second one is no collision. When we start the swing, we want to enable the collision by saying Cori only. And when we're done the swing, we're going to say no collision. I'm going to right click on the disable player and implement event and then right click on this enable player collision and then implement this event. And disable player is where we will be connecting our set collision enabled as no collision. And then enable player weapon collision is where we will be setting this up and make sure this impact box is connected as target for both. So this is how you set up a atom notify state. Now let's go on with our combo counters. So in our weapon base, right now in our event graph, we don't really have anything. If you have been following with this tutorial again, in our BP sword, we did create an on component overlap function to check to see if we're attacking the enemy, hitting the enemy, and then apply damage to the enemy. We're just going to take this function, remove it by pressing Control X, and then putting it into the weapon base. So this function will be applicable to all the other weapons that we're going to be creating with this weapon base as the parent class. And then also we want to get our impact box set collision enabled from our sword and set this to our weapon base. So in our weapon base, where we have our on component begin overlap, we need to do a monitor here. The monitor is to just to check when the player swung, did they hit any of the enemy actor? Now I want to get a variable created for the actor type. So the one of the easiest way that I do is drag off of this other actor and I'm just going to promote to a variable and, and delete that immediately. That'll create a variable for me right here. And then the type, instead of being single, we're going to make it into an array. So after we have confirmed that the player that we just hit or the actor that we just hit is the enemy, we're going to drag in our other actor. We're going to do a get and then we're going to say add unique and add this other actor to this get other actor array. So what we're doing is every time we hit an enemy, we're going to grab their reference and we're going to put it into this little box, right? Array box. And now we're going to start our function. First function would be start monitor. Now we're going to create a custom event. This would be hit underscore start monitor. And this hit start monitor, all we have to do is get our other actor array and we're going to clear it. So every time the sword swing starts, we want to clear this array to say that it's a fresh swing. All the enemies who are previously hit, we want to click clear it off. And now we're going to create another custom event. And this would be named hit underscore stop monitor. And this hit stop monitor, we're going to first do a branch. And the condition for the branch is pretty straightforward. We got to drag our other actor array and we want to get our length. We want to see if we actually collected any type of data of the enemy. Did we hit any of the enemy? Basically, that's what we're asking here. We want to see if this is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, that means we hit some someone. That is an actual enemy because we're doing that check right here. And if it is, then we want to do a interface function notify. So back in our interface, we're going to go ahead and add in a new function. And this would be named notify underscore attack result. And this would have an input of success, which is a Boolean type. Compile. And then now back in our weapon base, we're going to get our player character because we do want to notify our player character that we successfully hit someone. Drag off of this and say notify, attack result, connect this to the true, and then make it a success. And if this length is, is zero or less because we haven't hit anything, then we want to go ahead and notify player failed to hit someone. Oh, and make sure they connect the target here. Now, just to just for testing purposes, I'm going to add a print string here on both of these. And on the bottom one, I'm going to say miss. And then on the top one, I'm going to say hit. We can now compile and save this. And now we need to call in this hit start monitor and stop monitor from our third person character. So in our third person character, we're going to just do, just for the sake of keeping it nice and tidy, I'm going to get another reference to this attached weapon. And when we enable collision, we want to go ahead and start our monitor, hit start monitor. And when we disable, disable our collision, we want to go ahead and say hit stop monitor. And this is when these two functions are going to fire. Let's go ahead and say hit monitors. All right, we put a comment around it. And now we want to run this attack 
notify attack result on our third-person character. Now, in our third-person characters interface, you'll see notify attack result. I'm going to go ahead and implement this event, and we need to now call this on our combo manager. So we don't have a combo manager, so let's go and create a combo manager. I'm going to use a actor component as our combo manager, and you can choose to use a blueprint, regular blueprint, or you can build this into your third person, which however you would like. I think actor component keeps it nice and clean. So I'm going to select the actor component here, and then I'm going to say BPC combo manager. And for immediately I'm going to go to my third person character and then add this BPC combo manager to my character. So I initialize this, compile and then save. Now let's go ahead and edit this combo manager. Now this combo manager requires a couple of different variables before we edit. We don't need this event begin play or such. Our first variable is going to be our combo counter. This would be of type integer. This is going to be the, the variable that's going to keep track of our combo. Next is going to be our miss counter. This variable is going to keep track of how many times did the player miss. And the next variable is max misses allowed. If you set this max miss misses allowed to zero, that means the moment the player hits misses their hit once, the combo is going to break. If you want to be lenient with the player, you can always allow them to miss like maybe once or twice. This is when the miss counter and the misses, max miss is allowed. It's going to work together to break the combo or continue the combo. The next one we're going to set up is combo timeout. This will be of type float. Now this is the time that the player have in between their swings. The moment the player hits something or misses something, regardless, the combo timeout is going to start. And before this combo timeout runs out, the player needs to hit something else. If not, the combo is going to get reset. And the last variable that we're going to have is our combo timer reference. And this would be of type timer handle. And this is going to be a reference to our timer that's going to count down our combo timeout. So let's go ahead and create our function. First, we're going to go ahead and create a custom function. And this would be named handle combo. And on the handle combo, we're going to get an input. And this would be our attack result. And it's going to be of type boolean. Now, did we hit the enemy or not hit the enemy? So let's go ahead and do a branch on this. And if it is true, we hit the enemy. And if it is false, we missed. So if it is true, we want to now go ahead and increment our combo counter. So let's use a function for that. I'm going to create a new function called increment combo counter. The function is pretty straightforward. You grab your combo counter, do a get, and then we're going to do a plus plus on this, and then that will increment the integer. And off of this, we're going to go ahead and return. That's it for incrementing it. And in our event graph, we can go ahead and plug this into our true. For our false, we want to now do the same thing, but we want to increment our misses. So increment miss counter. Same thing. We're going to drag our miss counter, and then we're going to do a plus plus to increment our miss counter. And immediately, we're going to do a check. If this miss counter is equal to or greater than our max misses allowed, then we know that the player has not successfully hit something else, so we want to now break our combo. To break our combo, we're going to create a new function and name this reset combo. And reset combo is very straightforward. We're going to take our combo counter, set it to zero, take our miss counter, set it to zero. And we're going to also clear and invalidate timer by handle. And this would be our combo timer ref. I know we haven't set up our combo timer yet, but we want to also clear when we reset. And we want to go ahead and return, just like that. And then now in our increment miss, off of true, we want to go ahead and reset combo. And off of false, we just want to go ahead and return node. Back in our event graph, now we can plug this increase miss counter. Now we're going to go ahead and create a set timer by event function and connect this to our increment combo. Now, whenever the combo actually gets incremented, we want to now do the combo timeout timer function. So drag this combo timeout and then plug it in here. And now I have set this combo timeout to three. And the event is pretty straightforward. We're going to create a first create a custom event and name this as break combo. And we're going to drag our reset combo and then just plug it in here. After the miss counter, so if the player misses any of their hit, the combo is going to automatically break, so we don't need to run a timer. However, if you allow the player to miss, then we also want to have a fail safe here. Because if you allow the player to miss, after the player misses, they will have indefinite time for their next swing, and we don't want that. So here, we want to get our max misses allowed. 
And we want to say if this is greater than, it has to be greater than zero, not equal to. We're going to do a quick branch here with the condition. Let me move this out. Connect this to the miss counter and connect this true to the timer. So if our max miss is allowed, it's greater than zero. If we allow the player to miss more than once, then we want to run the timer. If the play, if the max miss is a zero, then we don't want to set this timer for our miss counter. Now drag in your combo timer reference, do a set and connect the execution pin and also the return value here. In our third person, where we have our event notify attack result, we want to drag our BPC combo manager and then we're going to call in our handle combo. And let's go ahead and plug this success into the attack result. So let's try that again, F, miss, and then when the enemy spawns in, there you go, combo one, combo, and I took three seconds, so it reset the combo. Again, one more time, it took three seconds to reset the combo. Now, it's very important that you need to know what your play animation time is, because right now this sword function is very slow. So I'm hitting, I there's a high chance of me hitting that reset combo before I hit an enemy. So I'm going to increase my animation time in the play montage to 1.5. And let's go ahead and spawn in an enemy and then you'll see I'm attacking much faster. So I can go ahead and keep clicking and the enemy is gonna hit with the combo. Now I have comp five combo. And if I not, if I stop hitting, then after three seconds, it's going to go ahead and say reset the combo. All right, folks, in this video, we took a look at how to do the combo counter functions. In the next video, we're gonna do the UI function of it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when the next video gets released. And if you could, please hit that like button as this will help the channel grow and reach out to many more developers just like you. Thank you again for stopping by and I'll catch you on the next video, which is gonna be our UI function.